22 years, drove it away at my wedding with the wife and everything. Nice. Uh, In the paddock with John McKissick's Fairlane, Riverside Spec Fairlane. I'll try to keep six feet away from you since you know arms. There we go. We're good. COVID. So uh, tell us about this thing. 66 Ford Fairlane. Uh, had it 22 years, drove it away at my wedding with the wife and everything. Nice. Uh, had to bring her along. She wouldn't have it anyway. And then uh, it evolved into a uh, you know, 20% track car, 80% street car, and then it started getting more and more into a track car, and eventually everything got taken out of it. We got it down to like 2,900 pounds, and on slicks. 2,900 pounds? Oh yeah, and everything this big was old gone. thing? Everything was gone. Obviously that's changed since uh, Since, since then, then, and then uh, you know, a lot of open track for you know 15 years, having fun with the uh, different clubs in Northern California, and uh, started doing Optima, first event pretty competitive on the on the performance side and then D&E &E, got crushed everything had to go back in so really took a liking to the to the Optimus streetcar challenge and uh, put everything back in and it's been uh, it's been downhill for having, <laughs> having fun it's been downhill having fun the whole time so uh, yes we are here at Willow Springs you see the sign back there with Optima the first uh, event for a lot of us since COVID-19 started. So what are the specs on this thing? What have you done to it? Uh, motor, 427 dart block. Uh, Tremec T56. Uh, Curry, not a Curry. Speedway engineering, full floating rear end. Meyer suspension. Got his Mod 1 kit in the back with the uh, cantilever suspension. This is the coolest feature the Tabila bot might add right here. <laughs> Whoa, awesome. electric. Uh, electric man. Electric trunk latch. It's manual. You got to pull a cable. Oh, I see the cable yeah. right there. And then we got JRI shocks all the way around. Um, shod with Wilwood brakes. 12 inch rotor in the, in the front with a six piston. 11 inch rotor in the back with a four piston. We're on a 389 Torison nine inch loader rear. Like I said. Oh yeah. No. Fiberglass everywhere. The bumpers, the bumper brackets, the deck lid, the hood. The doors and the fenders are all fiberglass. So that's all from Kreitz Restorations in Ohio. Uh, interior, basically stock. Had the dock, the the, uh, the dash flocked, so you don't get any glare. Built a console for it. Uh, Kirky seats, um, subframe connectors, torque arm, panned rod in the rear, big bars in the front, inch and an eighth. Uh, what uh, what wheels and tires? Team three wheels out of San Leandro. Very close to home. 18 by 11. These are 18 by 12s. 18 by 12. So as soon as Falcon gets us some bigger, wider tires, you and I can go play. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of power is the motor put out? The motor's putting about 750 to flywheel right now. Okay. Haven't dyno tested. Top, thinking about going to Sniper, to EFI, maybe E85. Not really. Kind of on the fence about it. But uh, we're having fun with the way it is. <laughs> asked me to go ahead and critique his autocross run since he knew I had footage of the run. So I'm going to do what I've done in another video before where we'll pause on key sections of the course. And actually, the first half of the course or so from the start line until the banking in the back, I thought John took really well. There was one mistake uh, that he made there. But rather than focusing on a bunch of mistakes, I would just say the first half, John did well. That's not where he's losing time. There's two key mistakes that I'll highlight and pause on later on in the course. So let's check out his run.
This is the first big mistake John makes on the banking here. If you look above John's left shoulder, just off the front right of the car, you'll see the yellow green apex cone. And John is going to pass by that like four or five feet at least off of that cone. Um, he's almost a full car width probably away from the cone. In autocross, you never want to add distance. He's adding a ton of distance to a very long turn here. It's not needed for any setup reasons or anything else. It's just extra distance, extra time. This is where John's ginormous steering wheel and potentially the speed of the steering box that he has or the rack he has in the car is going to totally bite him. Uh, I'm going to pause the video twice in this first spot. Look at, he's already turned right. The slalom cone in front of him is still a decent ways in front of the car. But what I want you to do when the video resumes is watch how long he has to hold this right turn to make it around the the slalom cone in front of the car right now and when he turns left to make it around the next slalom cone he falls massively behind in the slalom here and the rest of the turns on this course he is barely getting the car turned before he's potentially plowing over the cone in front of him you want to get the car turned much earlier in the slalom here you can see that john is almost to this next cone and has not even begun to turn left yet. He's just gotten the steering wheel back to 12 o'clock. But he likes it. It's always it's always a showstopper, and people just love it. You always get stories. I had one when I was a kid. It's always yeah. that. It's Cannot always own that. an old car without it. So these are fiberglass doors, right? Yep. With can the dig recessed. It, can, can dig it. Door handle. Very, very nice. Yep. Your accumulator, accumulator is at your feet. Is right there, so I can. That is interesting. To oil all the factory pedals. And everybody loves my factory steering wheel. It's so big. Yeah, that's not autocross friendly, despite what some people say, Mary Posey. <laughs> it's just different strokes for different folks. Yeah. Okay, so you you can release the trunk from inside the car. Well, you gotta sit here and hold the hood. Uh, your uh, cooling pipes look like they were built by a plumber. They are. Plumber <laughs> IR. No, no pipes get sucked down. A lot of copper. Copper's friendly. Bends nice and easy. Polishes up pretty good. Bumpers are bumpers are tucked three inches in the front, three quarters in the back. Helped out a lot. You noticed on the cowl all the Swiss cheese before that kept the front end on the ground. Yep. Without that there, the front end would carry a Thunder Hill on the back straight. 